Praise God, praise God. If you see my title, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon again. If you see my title, it says Domestic Violence, My Story, Your Story, Everything is a Spirit. You know, yesterday I put out a post. And the reason why I put out that post is because I was standing with someone else that had went through domestic violence. And I'm just going to be very transparent like I always am. Praise God, praise God. Uh, I need to finish the story because one thing I never want to do, and I was very convicted because I just don't want to put something out there and not put the complete story because here's the deal. We need to stop doing that. Come on, somebody. I need to tell you the ending of that matter. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And the beginning. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because so many people, oh my God, so many women got in touch with me. You'd be surprised. And I want you to understand that everything happens it's not always the devil. Sometimes it's our choices. And so I'm going to run through this um, as quick as I can, but also as transparent because people need to hear it so you can understand what's going on with the body of Christ and also what's going on basically just with people. It's not just being about being saved. It's about being a human person. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So when I had got married, um, I am very prophetic and I'm going to be very transparent on purpose, like I said. I have to be honest. I heard God say no. Yes, I did. I heard God say no, but I wanted what I wanted. I was tired of being alone. I was like, look, God, and this for grown folks on here tonight. Hallelujah. I said, God, you ain't in the bed with me at night. You know, I'm tired. I'm lonely, whatever. Y'all get the drift, right? And I remember God saying, no, Deanna. And I I pretty much told God, look, I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's it. And God, when you tell God that, God will just sit back and be like, okay, go ahead. So I did that. And I have to be honest with you. It was more than what I bargained for. He was a minister. He, and we also actually performed together. The, the man could sing. He can sing. He, he has an anointing to sing. And like I said, he was an ordained minister as well. Well, basically, this is my take because a lot of, a lot of people do this, especially in the church. I thought that, <laughs> I thought I had so much God in me that I could change him. I mean, surely God will hear my prayers. Surely God will know who I am. Surely God will, 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 will do something on my behalf. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm speaking here. Hallelujah. From experience. And I began to see that God wasn't doing anything. And the more I would pray, God would tell me, Deanna, he don't want me like you. Oh, come on, somebody. This is where being unequally yoked is real. And I tell you, and I'm going to be transparent, and these things happen. This is not exaggeration. You know, some people like to lie. I I don't have time for that. So I was working at Comcast. I never forget. <laughs> and um, good job. And, and it was so crazy because when you're in the wrong relationships, I'm talking about I was getting bonus checks, $2,000, $3,000. I didn't even know where all the money was coming from. I know I was doing my job good, but I, I didn't understand how all that. I mean, it was just checks coming in. Like like the devil was rewarding me for being in something that would later try to destroy me. I'm being honest. And so long story short, what ended up happening is that um, I remember God, one day I was at work and I started getting sick. And God said, um, oh, they had had, you know how they have a, a part where after you've been there so so long, they're getting ready to change like PPOs or whatever. And I, I never forget, God said, get the best insurance plan because you're going to need it. And when God said that, I was like, I'm in trouble. Y'all, y'all ain't ready for me because some people think God don't talk like that. Whatever. I got the best plan. Two months later, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, wow. And hold on. I walked in that office. That woman didn't even touch me. She was a Christian. She said, you got cancer. And I was, I was offended. I said, how are you going to just say that? She said, the Holy Spirit talking to me. Well, long story short, I ended up having cervical cancer. Um, I almost died. I got to almost, a, what, 80 pounds. I was on hospice. Y'all ain't ready for me. <laughs> and I mean, um, I had to go through surgery after surgery. And during that, that time, he was actually... um. You know, home, not really coming to the hospital. So basically, I was by myself. And just to be honest with you, he was having affairs. And I knew it because I don't care if you're sick or whatever. Your gift don't stop. Come on, somebody. God don't stop talking to you. And I'm laying in that hospital like, and I'm going to be very transparent. I don't know who all this is for, but I'm going to tell it like it is. I said, God, take me. I said, I messed up. I said, I didn't mess up. I said, a whole prophet going to mess up. Oh, and I forgot something. The day before I met, God will always send somebody that... Um, there was another prophetess. She warned me a day before I met that man. She said, Deanna, the devil's after you. And me cocky, girl, everything fine. I'm cool. I'm good. You know, I'd be like, I'm good. 
not even know what was getting ready to happen to me. I don't know why he made me um tell y'all that part. So here I am in the hospital and um they're they're telling me, get your family together, call everybody, you're getting ready to die. And I, I pretty much asked God, I said, God, I messed up, go ahead and take me. I'm tired anyway, you know. And I was about what, 39, 40, something like that, because I'm 50 now. Um, yeah. So basically, long story short, um, <laughs> I mean, I went on a ride. A ride I, I didn't really want to go on. I'm talking about it was just crazy. So the day I was released from the hospital, he didn't know that I had spoken to our neighbor. And I told the neighbor, I said, let me know if he's had women in my house. Just look at me when I come at the hospital. And as soon as I got out the hospital and I began to go in the house, my neighbor came outside and gave me that look. I was like, wow, he really did this. So as I progressed to actually get sicker and sicker, um, they called my daughter, they called everybody. I was beginning to plan for my funeral. I had a million dollar insurance policy and I messed around and told him that y'all ain't ready for me. <laughs> and one day I heard him and his son and they was talking about how they was going to spend the money. I got mad. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. I got mad. I went in the room. And I did um, I did this number. I said, God, am I getting ready to die for real? And I heard God say, fight. He said, but you're going to be alone when you fight. And I cried. I said, God, I'm already alone technically because I was sick. I couldn't have sex. I couldn't do nothing. So y'all understand the game. And so here it was. I'm fighting. And I was going to the doctor, and the doctor's telling me I'm going to die and everything. But God told me to fight. So what I did is I started getting bolder. I said, God, you said I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. So I told the doctors, I said, I'm not coming back to y'all. I don't care. Or you're going to die. They was writing me letters. I wish I had to save those letters because I had would have been proof, right? They were writing me letters saying I was going to die. Well, point blank, it just got bad and bad. But then I started getting faith. I started remembering who my God was. I couldn't even pray in my home no more, so I had to go in my Mustang and pray. I had a nice, pretty blue Mustang. And um, I went and I sit up in the car, and this is what I said. I said, God, you didn't do this. I said, I did this. I said, I, I did what I want to do, and now I'm asking you to get me out of it. And I'll never forget my prayer. I said, God, if you get me out of this, I'll never disobey you again. I'll never just do what I think I want to do. Now, hold on. We're only human, but I, I had to confess. I said, God, I did this. And I was crying, y'all. I was crying. I was so hurt because I couldn't believe that I had I had been mean to me. I didn't love me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Hallelujah. And so God said, fight, Deanna, fight. So what I had to do is I started. I t I'm just going. He don't want me to leave out nothing. I was trying to. I, I say, don't touch me. I say, I don't, I don't want you touching me, point blank. So I start my notice when I when I did that, my body started to get, I started to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So then, I pretty much told him I said I don't want to be with you anymore, and that's when the beating started. And I was so weak, I could not fight back because remember, I'm fighting the cancer. And the day after I had got out of the hospital, just to be honest with you. He had did like the Karate Kid. You know how the Karate Kid had his foot up and was getting ready to do the kick? That's what he did. So I looked up and I'm like, what is he doing? Because I'm lethargic. I'm under, I'm under the medication at that time. And he literally kicked me in the stomach the day after I had my operation. I remember my body started convulsing. And I said, God, I just want to die. Well, let's just fast forward a little bit. I end up um, leaving him. And I have to be very, very transparent when I left, it was stalking, it was this, it was that, it was so much stuff, just to be honest with you. I was like, wow, you know, um, and that was the end of that, once I left. Now, I will say this, for people that are still in it, I had to show him I was serious, because he was stalking me so bad, till one night he called me, he said, yeah, you sure are snoring loud, so he was by my door, and I'm telling you what I did, I'm not encouraging anybody else to do this, okay? But I had to show him Diana. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not trying to be ugly, but don't act like y'all don't know before we got saved that we were somebody else. So, point blank, I, I opened that door and I told him, I said, if you ever bother me again. And I just told him what I told him. And he must have knew I was serious because he never bothered me again. But I will tell you this because, and this is what I want to tell you. He did apologize. But I never forget what he said, you guys. He said, you are a true woman of God. Don't ever let nobody tell you that you're not. He said, because I tried to break you and I couldn't. And he said, I do apologize. And he said, the devil tried to make me kill you. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all ain't ready for me. He said, the devil tried to make me kill you. And he said, I'm sorry. So I wanted to make sure I say that part of the story. Because I know he did wrong, but he did apologize. Some people never apologize. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah.
And so I got so many, so much um email last night and Facebook, YouTube, everything. Just just I don't even know how to post God on YouTube or somebody just I don't know. And I just want to tell you everything's a spirit. Some people they don't understand. Um, we were both in church, so I, I wasn't trying to tell anybody because there I am a whole prophetess and I'm dealing with this at home. Well, then what would people really say? Cause they, trust me, they was talking to my, she a prophetess, but look what she going through. Oh, come on somebody. That's why a lot of church people won't even say anything. Church folks won't even say anything to other church folks because you know, your business going to be around the church and here in the pulpit. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that everything is a spirit. I prayed for that young man because he was a little younger than me, not much now. So I don't want nobody to think that I was, um, you know, trolling the um, kindergarten section. No, but I still pray this day. I don't ever pray for the demise of our brother and our sister because that's who that is first. Well, come on, somebody, I'm trying to talk to you. You thinking you just in a relationship. That's still your brother and your sister in Christ. And guess what? They still need to be saved, whether they saved or not. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Too much of this, um, like against each other. There is a spirit. Everything is a spirit. It's not just your brother and your sister. That's a spirit that's in your brother and sister trying to test you, trying to kill you, trying to do this, trying to do that. And I'm saying to, this to say that. That's why it is important that we pray. It is important that we fast. It is important that we study our word so we can actually identify the situation. Now, I'm going to tell you why I did what I did. It wasn't just because I was lonely. I saw I saw the potential in that brother. I saw the spirit. That boy could sing. That boy can sing. I'm talking about sing to God. Y'all don't hear me. And so I was trying to do what only God can do. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I was trying to do what only God can do. And the reason why I'm saying that is because some of you are right now trying to do what only God can do. God can change a person. You can't change a person. I don't care how much you love them. You cannot change them unless they want to be, unless they surrender to God. And to be honest with you, he was not ready at that time. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, and, and I knew that one day I was, you know, inside the bed and I have prophetic. That's why you can't. Ooh, hallelujah. I feel so full. You can't just marry anybody just because they fine. And that's what most people are doing. Uh, they got a good credit score. Um, pastor put it together. Um, this one said we belong together. Um, credit score is good. Job's good. I mean, you know, everything just seemed to be A, B, C, D, E. And yet at home, behind closed doors, y'all fighting each other. Y'all cussing each other. Y'all having sex on each other. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What I mean by that is messing around, cheating, whatever you want to put it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because you did not spiritually say, God, is this the one? God, show me. You know, when you meet people, this is how you got to say this thing. God, show me their spirit because this is a lie like a rug. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care. People have a gift to gab. The father of lies is the devil. Come on, somebody. And he used people very well. So you have to go back to God and say, God, give me confirmation. And then another thing, and I'm going to be very transparent. Men and women, stop having sex before you are married. That's the reason why he says that. Because guess what? That stuff gets so strong. Now you have married this person that you really don't even know spiritually as a friend. That's nothing. Y'all don't know how to be friends first. Y'all, y'all, y'all just move so fast, even in the Christian community. Oh, he fine. She fine. Y'all move so fast. I, I, I had to learn because let me tell you something. I'm a one-timer. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for me. I'm not going to go through something over and over and over and over again. The devil is a lie. Everything is a spirit. But here's the deal. You have to ask yourself, can you truly say no to the temptation that's inside of you? Hallelujah to his name. Because that's what it's all about. It's about temptation. Oh, come on, somebody. And salvation. The enemy is after your salvation. And he will send someone. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He will send someone to throw you off course. I'm telling you, hallelujah. Because remember, my, my prophet, his friend, had called me a day before I met him. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. I, I will always remember that because that's exactly what happened. It is very important that you be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever. I don't care what nobody say. I know they love to quote Corinthians. Well, you know, they sanctify by the one that's really, let me tell you something. The Bible says that they'll pull you down before you can pull them up. And that is the truth. I can attest to it. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. And a lot of people, let me tell you something. A lot of people, ain't, ain't, they don't like this word because I'm going to tell you something. Y'all not going to like me. I can tell when people are fornicating. 
Heck, we all can tell. Have you ever been in the room? Let me make y'all laugh for a sharp moment. Have you ever been in a room, and even at church, and you see something, and you can just, you don't even know what that spirit is, but you look at two people, you be like, you be looking at me like, oh yeah, did something happen? I mean, you could just tell, right? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. It's a spirit on them. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. And I don't know why God is leading me this way. I, I got to go this way now. I have to tell y'all, when it was over with, I felt this small. Because I couldn't understand how I could miss it like that. How could I allow my Tim, the, the sin within me, the, the lust, whatever it was that, that, that wanted to be with him. Let's keep it in. Yo, well, I'm going to keep it 100 because some people ain't going to talk like that. So I, I, I had to deal with Deanna. What, what was he you? What, 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 what were you thinking? What was going on? Because he was not even on your level. What were you thinking? You have to ask the questions to yourself. And sometimes people don't want to do that. We'll blame the other person all day long. Yeah, he had his faults, but wait a minute. What drew him to me and me to him? Mm. We don't want to look at ourselves. We love to check others, but we don't like to check ourselves. The Bible says examine yourself. So I had to examine myself. And to be honest with you, I haven't really dated since then. No, I ain't gay. Oh, yeah, I'm saying it. No, I don't. I've just been. God, I met that when I was in that car. When God really says yes, I'll know they'll know. Because I'm going to be honest with you. It's not just about being with someone. It's who can gird you spiritually. Come on, somebody. Because I'm going to tell you, and I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm a powerhouse. I didn't ask for this. Truth be told, I didn't want this. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I didn't want this because this is heavy what I carry. Hallelujah. And two things could happen when you carry this kind of R. Either they can help carry it or deplete it. Y'all ain't ready for me. Hallelujah. And nobody's going to deplete my all again. Hallelujah to his name. Not by choice or just by my own um, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to understand who you are. And whose you are and what you carry. Because the enemy is after what you carry. The enemy tried to make me abort my calling. Hallelujah. Because I never forget at the end of that thing. When I was in that bed and I couldn't even get up. Oh, come on, somebody. Have you ever been so hurt that you can't even move out of bed? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sure everybody have. Don't play with me. You know it's the truth. And I remember what God told me. He said, Deanna, you will never be who I've called you to be if you stay with him. And I cried, I cried. I remember that day I cried. I said, God, you could have changed him. He said, Dan, I can't force nobody to want me like you. Because I've always loved God. Because truth be told, I've always had God. Oh, come on, somebody. Not because I was perfect, because I was imperfect. And I know I needed a perfect God to help me. Oh, hallelujah, because I had some issues. Nobody playing. So you got to know who you are and whose you are. And if this is real to you. Now, let, let me tell you how to get over it. Because everything is a process. Just like you process to get into it, just like a habit. You have to process your way out of it. i never forget. I, had, I didn't even know about a vision board. God said, I need you to make your vision board. Because I was so weak. I felt I felt so ashamed because everybody had knew. Especially when I put it out there because I put it out. I could not hide it no more. I told everybody. Of course, he had a different story because you know there's always three, three stories. Let's just be real. <sighs> and I tell you, that that vision board helped me. I even had to write, I'm Apostle Deanna Dix. I had forgot who I was because I was like, surely I can't be anointed doing this foolishness. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Surely. Oh, and then God, he had to speak to me, say, I, I, I confound the foolish things of this. I use the foolish things of this word to confound the wise. He said, I still called you, Deanna. He said, I allowed you to make that mistake so that you will know that you can't do nothing without me. I don't care how anointed you are, how appointed you are. You can't even breathe without me. Hallelujah. I'm talking to y'all tonight. So every decision that you make, it is about your livelihood. It is about your life. It is about your anointing. It is about everything that you believe in. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is coming after you, all those things. He wasn't just after my body. Oh, come on, somebody. He was after my anointing. He was after my wisdom. He was after my discernment. Hallelujah. Because guess what? If he could stop, you 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 know they talking about my um my my thing is low. Every time I I you see how the enemy do. So I'm after her but in this. But I'm gonna tell you he was after because he wanted to stop what God was gonna do in my life. Notice I say it's the spirit that did it. 
So I pray that if you are going through anything, even now, remember who you are. I had to remember that God loved me. I had to remember that I am God's. I had to remember. And what I mean by God's, let me clarify that because we're not talking about that new religion, God's. I knew that I belonged to God. And I knew that he could restore me. I knew that he could replenish me. I knew that he could build me up again. I knew that he could heal me. I knew that he could deliver me. I knew that he could make me new again and even love my brother. I still love my ex-husband as my brother in Christ. Oh, come on, somebody, don't get it twisted. No, I'll never go back that way again. Because we are not to hate nobody. Oh, hallelujah to his name. This deep, this deep. Because some of y'all want to oh, have that bitterness, that bitterness to kill you, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Feel the power of God. I, I got to hurry and get off here because I don't know. All of a sudden, this thing say low battery. So I don't want to lose this because I feel the anointing on this. So I just wanted to tell y'all, you can live again. But do not stay in anything. because. And then they, they tried to put scripture on me. You know you're not supposed to get divorced. I say, oh, y'all want somebody to kill me? The devil is a lie. Let me tell you something right now. God will never. This is what God told me. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. I never forget. He said this too. He said, you are the apple of my eye. Would I send anything or anybody to hurt you? God would never send anything to hurt you, whether you are a male or a female, by the way, in any shape, form, or fashion. Hallelujah. You got to know who you are. God loves you, and God is sending you his best and his timing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Other than that, you got to put yourself under subjection. Put that lust under subjection. Put that body under subjection. Uh, under subjection. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get out of here because it keeps saying um, low battery. God bless you. God keep you. I love y'all. We're going to do this fast now, y'all. We're going to do this. God bless you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Real life soldiers for that is who you are. Mm, Let's get it.